about coming up with this idea? Is there any specific thing in the movie that sparked it all? Um, anything in the movie that sparked it all? Uh, you know, um, I think uh, I just really wanted to dive back into that time of my life when uh, graduating with a liberal arts degree and knowing that I loved movies, but I didn't know how that was going to manifest itself. And just sort of, it's just a big question mark, you know, the future. So I kind of wanted to, to explore that and try to see if that could be an interesting story, you know. And then I realized in the midst of it that it's called coming of age story, and it's actually a genre. But and there's but there's no not that many female coming of age stories. I was really surprised. Uh, so then that made me look at some of Jane Austen's stories because the girls, you know, the main characters have like a self discovery. Um, so that that got me really excited. And my title. I love my title. That got me out of bed every morning to figure it out. I That's dream too much. That's an inspiring way to look at it. Yeah, you got to have a great title. I really can't stress that enough for filmmakers, you know. Um, or it could be no title, and then all of a sudden you get your title. <laughs> what was your first impression of this film? Could you guys relate to this at all? Because like, I know you went to Juilliard, right? So was there any feeling like that when you got out of school and kind of... About dreams, oh yeah, I guess so, you know, um, I think what I related to the most or what I really liked about the script is that these are people that need each other to realize their dreams and um, I was listening to this interview with Viola Davis one time and she said something about she didn't, uh, until she got permission um, from someone, someone telling her that she's talented or whatever, that's when she followed her dream. Oh, yeah. And so I think for me that that was compelling, um, being that I do love singing and, and my character is a singer-songwriter. I was fortunate enough to put my own music into the film, which is really cool. And, and it's at this, like, it was actually my first, my music premiered for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> actually um, it's the same way that my characters did so that was really cool but what I really really liked too was the fact that um, this was a black woman that really loved U2 and Springsteen and uh, just had a, a, a very um, good re relationship with music in a different sense than is the norm and I appreciated that because we're complex as human beings and to get to show that on the screen and bring truth to that, which is true, um, was cool for me. Did it just so happen that you wrote a part with that musical quality to it or is that something you got to bring out of the character at all? Uh, um, well, the, the music, I mean, I mean I, yeah, the song well, was already <laughs> written, so I guess so. It kind of just yeah, merged really Abby's well. Abby's character was always like rock and roll kind of character and I remember I think we even had a discussion about that if if I if you felt like it needed to change her music taste and you were like no no don't don't change yeah, it yeah I remember know? I was like please yeah, don't change yeah, it yeah yeah and I was I was that was good because I just always saw you know uh, upstate New York as just yeah. you know kind of that sort of scene so and now for you, how about the whole idea of having a parent who is not kind of pushing you to find your dream? Because it's, I mean, it's kind of not life imitating art in that sense, because your father's in the industry too. So how is it maybe talking with him about it, and how does what this character goes through relate to that? Hmm. Um, uh, uh, sorry, that was like, threw me off a little bit. Um... <laughs> Talking to him, we we don't have character talk a whole lot, um, but talking to him versus my character talking to my family, I guess it's it's nice to to be able to have parents that aren't trying to push me in in a certain direction. Definitely, when I wanted to go into acting, it was like, hey, are you sure? There's not <laughs> something else you want to do? Maybe go to you know, med school or something. <laughs> um, 
but but it, it is interesting well, looking at time. looking at a character that because we all take things from our parents, we all learn yeah, different yeah. habits and patterns from our parents, um, and. I'm doing a terrible job answering this question. No, no, no. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I think I think it, they're, they're, we're very different in that way, me and Dora. Um, and I think she takes a lot of things from her mother that she doesn't real, realize for a long time. And I think um, I think I've I've grown to be able to realize at an, at an earlier age what what I take from my parents and and what I don't. Um, and I am very lucky to have parents that that aren't trying to. You know they know they know how to push us, and they know how to um, they know how to push us in the right direction without without being scared, you know, about it. And of course, as parents, you've got your own like, oh my God, I just want them to do well. I want them to be comfortable. I want them to be smart. But 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 for to have parents to be able to, to let go of that for a minute is is nice, but also to be able to push us. No. Can't do this. Can't answer the question anymore. No, it's a good answer. It's no, a that was rambling pretty, answer. Did. And any, anyone can relate to that. Just the yeah, idea yeah. of having parents push you. Or like, I can't even handle when my mom looks at what I write. She's like, you know, you spelled that wrong. <laughs> my dad is a grammar freak. My dad. I I got nervous when my dad would read read my school essays. I was just like, nope, you can't. Trick it. It's not done yet. Maybe. But yeah, yeah. My dad's a my dad's a big big grammar freak actually which made me a grammar freak which makes me very happy <laughs> no it's kind of a necessity in this industry especially if you're going to write actually right. how about the poetry in this are you big into poetry before you even wrote this movie do you write poetry i i don't write poetry um i like it i have a, a collection of, of poetry books i inherited from from my oldest sister and um I do think Emily Dickinson stays on my desk all the time. Um, I, I did think about her a lot, uh, but um, I just I thought it was poetry was the best sort of vehicle for self discovery, which is what I wanted Dora to go through, and uh, so that I developed developed that, but. Um, but Maybe yeah. it's because I suck at poetry, but I don't think there's anything that would make me feel more vulnerable than writing a poem. Oh my gosh. Oh my, I, I, yeah, no, I'm the worst. And, and, um, and Dora quotes the love song of Jail for Proof Rock by T.S. Eliot, which is my favorite poem. That's why I sort of, I put it in there. Um, but yeah, I, poetry actually scares me. <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> Which is a, in a good in a good way, you know. It's because yeah. Did directing your first feature film scare you at all? Yes, yes, very much. I mean, it's easy for me to roll out of bed in the morning, send my kids to school, and write for the next five hours. Um, that's one, you know. But the idea of of walking onto a set and everyone's looking at you. You know, um, with a thousand questions. Uh, so the first day was was a little daunting, but then, uh, but then working with such amazing actors, I just you know I fed off of their brilliance, and um, it ended up being the most fun ever. The shoot, even though it was only a three week shoot, we were yeah we we shot a lot of pages every day, so we were at a pretty high Good deal of locations for a three-week shoot. Yeah, oh. and yeah. Outside and the yeah, and two snowstorms. Did that affect the schedule at all? Yes, we had two half. Ended up having two half days. So um, and no and no reshoots at all. We had an extra week uh, tagged on for just little pickups. Um, you know, not recording sound or anything. But I think we did really great, and that is due. A great deal also to my director of photography, for, uh, who's my husband, Alex Rappaport. Oh, wow. He, he works fast, and he's an editor, so he, as he shoots, he knows how it's going to be in the editing room, so, which was great. So I could just concentrate on my actors, you know, um, and the other thousand questions. So. so no need to edit while you shoot then, or did he do that? 
He was editing. Time. He was editing in his head while we shot. You know, and a lot of our discussions were, "Are we really going to need that?" He's like, "Trust me, you're going to thank me in the editing room." And sure enough, I was thanking him a lot in the editing room. <laughs> Where in upstate New York did you shoot? In Saugerties. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, and Woodstock, and Stonebridge. I do remember seeing the Woodstock sign in the background. At right. That point now. Right. Exactly. Yeah, in the poetry festival. And I assume the town embraced you guys quite a bit up there. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it sort of shut down during the winter. That was a lot of the reason why we chose to shoot there, because the summer is really packed, because we have these horse shows. So, um, I don't you know, there were a couple of, no, a lot of your, I don't know, embrace. A lot of your local friends came in. Yeah, no, they were yeah. great. Yeah, that's true. And, and yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Lucky's uh, I would place say is a juice bar and a, a chocolate that's store true. at the same time. It was really dope. They were co totally cool, you know. I mean, That's we got true. really lucky. It yeah, a lot of I mean, people, there's always they were very kind. You there know? was always one or two people that were like, "Get off my property," kind of people. But, <laughs> Except uh, without that accent. Without that, okay, that's an get East off Texas. my property. I'm, get I'm, out of Saugerty. I'm, I'm kind from, of picturing Clay Eastwood right now. I know. Well, I'm from <laughs> Beaumont, so you just got my East Texas major <laughs> accent. <laughs> so no, but for the most part, yeah. And they're so excited. And the state yeah, where we shot. Vera's house is a Hindu retreat. Um, it's called Vivekananda, and they were amazing. They gave us the place again. It was the winter, so they were kind of shut down, and um, there were places that we couldn't sit because the Swami Vivekananda had sat there, and we were totally cool with that. But. I feel like a no-touch place is not a good movie. No, no, it was just, no, they just moved our production designer, Lisa Myers, who was amazing. We just sort of moved that couch to the side, or she moved it out, right? Or yeah. there was a bedroom. They moved where, everything to one room. Room, yeah. Nobody could go in right. and touch anything. Right. That was that was a special place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That really yeah. was. It had a whole energy there. I think the Swami was smiling on us the whole time. I think he liked the story. Subject. Did you guys stay up there for the duration of the shoot? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So what did you find to do on the days off? <laughs> well, me and Eden found this really cool place. Fiber um, Flame? Fiber, Fiber Flame, Flame. That's yeah. right, in Woodstock. And yeah. we did, like, crafts. Um, and like I made a, a mug, for a mug Katie. for me, which I drank out of every day while <laughs> editing. He gave and, me uh, a picture frame. What you make? What did you make? I made like. Did you make a, a cup mug too? and yeah. a notebook? Yeah, like we made yeah. some. It was and we got to bond and uh, get to know each other better. And it, that was a really for me that was a really cool experience. But even like when we shot. Going out onto the Hudson River was a, a trek, so we kind of, it, I, I don't know if it's a hike, but we like, we, we know we had, a, a, like, we had yeah. a little hike to, to um, location, and that was kind of cool to do with the cast and crew, um, but I, I had fun at this place called Lucky's, I mean, it's my favorite stuff, chocolate and juice. I, mean, I know, it's like one stop shopping. Heaven. That was good. And they loved, and Diane's favorite <laughs> restaurant was Miss Lucy's. Yes. Yeah. I, got those, I got a stamp card and everything. It's important <laughs> when you go away to find like your go-to places like that. We yeah. should have Lucky's do a I Dream Too Much Chocolate they special really shop. Should. They should. We should work on that. I would totally go up there and get some. Yeah. I got a little fondue maker. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was good. Oh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the music in the film because you you obviously have a performance in the film and that's your song over the end credits, right? Yeah, yes. it's incredible. It's wonderful. How'd you go about choosing what songs to put there? Oh, um, early right like right after we finished shooting, one of my producers, Jay Thames, sent me. Eden's song, uh, and I was like, oh my god, I, I love this, and it's, it really just was sort of the essence of the film, and I, so I always had in the back of my mind that that would go over the credits, um, and, and of course, you know, Danielle's amazing performance ends the film, and so that, that always was sort of my anchor, you know, um, so I guess I worked backwards. <laughs> with the rest of the movie. So we need I Dream Too Much Chocolates and a soundtrack. Yes, exactly. I would genuinely listen to these two songs. Yeah, well, our music supervisor, Kim Baum, did 
Amazing. Such woman. a great job with, you know, a very, very small budget. She really found um, just great, like Mosquitoes um, did the opening credit song and they were great. And, um, and our composer, Heidi Roadwall, she was someone, she was in a band called Stu. Uh, they did a show on Broadway called Passing Strange that I saw. And I just, listening to their music, I was like, one day I really want to work with Heidi. So that, that was a dream. Stu. And Stu, I know, they're working work together him. again. They got back together again and they're doing something. And um, so working with Heidi was a dream come true too. She was amazing. How is it for you taking the film from writing to shooting and then to editing? Because I imagine you watched it a million times over. Is it hard to kind of take a step back and see the big picture? Extremely, and how an extremely. And it, you know, it, it, it was so funny. With each draft, I was like, I'm done. This is it. This is the draft. I'd send it to my producers and it'd come back all, you know. I was like, oh, okay, I gotta get back to work. Because uh, the point is to avoid work, you know. <laughs> this is it. It's done. Mm -hmm. But no. So I think the 29 drafts, the 29th draft was our shooting script. I mean, it wasn't like a huge revision, but they were just, each draft was passed. Um, the shoot was. Uh, you know, giving them the script and then saying, "Okay, let's let's work on it." You know, give tell me what you're thinking for your character, and that was awesome. That was such a great dialectic. The editing was the biggest challenge mm -hmm. because it's like this. Oh yeah, I guess that's a great cut. Let's do that. You just it's like, how far do I need to get back to get a perspective and fresh eyes? So that's when I really counted on my team of my producers, uh, Ed McWilliams, Jack McWilliams, and Jay Thames. I would send them, you know, uh, and Rick Linklater. I'd send them, you know, uh, a version, and they would come back. And again, each version, I was like, I'm done. It's finished. I don't have to work anymore. And then I'd come back with all these notes, and I'd get really pissed off, and then I'd let it sit and filter through my body, and we would just go back to work. It's just a constant challenge to just put your ego aside. Put your ego aside. Mm -hmm. They don't like my work. It's like, it's not about you, Katie. Put your ego aside. Get back to work. So, um, anyway, so that was, was a very good question. <laughs> How about from your perspective? What was it like seeing the movie in its entirety for the first time? Was there anything that you looked at and you're like, wow, that plays like a lot better than I ever imagined? Or, I don't know, maybe where did that take go? Oh, man, I That's don't. That's such a good question. I don't like watching stuff with people for the first time. I like watching it by myself and cringing by myself. Which first. I got to do, thank God. See, I yeah. didn't get the. I'm sorry, Danielle. No, it's okay. I mean, it happens. Yeah, it's, I didn't even it, think it about happens, that. You know, so yeah. you don't get to see your work first. But I don't like it. But my agent was sitting beside me. She's like, just breathe. It's fine. Just breathe. But um, it was, it was fun, and I really did uh, did enjoy the scenes with Eden, and, and the, the songs turned out great, and I um, I really love the scene where we get a little tipsy. I, that turned out much better than I thought it would. Were you surprised that we kept in? Oh, uh, I did. It, 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 like, it really happened. I, I didn't mean to shake up the bottle. And <laughs> It just it just exploded everywhere. It's a very natural moment that happens. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think yeah. the strangest thing about watching it, and especially this being like my first feature, your first feature, your first feature. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think the fact that you, and this must be insane, you know, in the editing room, but but you don't necessarily become attached to the script in the story, but it's something that you've gotten to know for 18 days over and over and over and you, we shot so much in those 18 days it kind of like I watch the movie now with all the cuts and everything and I'm just like oh my god we shot so much shit because that looked like a lot of stuff yeah. but they cut out a lot of stuff you know yeah. and, and so I think I think to watch that is just kind of you know, it's a, it's a tough thing when you're it like, is. so where does this part of the story go? And and 
and okay, so you put that together then, and and you you know you've got a totally different version of it in your mind than the audience is able to see. And luckily, it turned out perfectly for the audience. But my brain now is just like yeah, it's it's just the story is just like this. I know. Now. Well, it really is true. The um, the 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 film outgrew the story. Yeah, there yeah. were so many things. I was like. No, this must stay. And it's like, no, get rid of it. You know, we were just like, you have to be ruthless yeah. in the editing room. You cannot be. And one of my favorite uh, scenes, I held on to the bitter end, and I finally had to cut it in December. I was like, it's just not that story anymore. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's editing. <laughs> What a what a the, I have to say of every stage in the film, the the two times that I felt most like a filmmaker was when I was working with my actors and in the editing room. And all the rest of it, I don't know what <laughs> what I mean the writing, I'm a writer, you know, it doesn't feel like I'm filmmaking yet, but you know, being with them and working on characters and then sitting there and getting and, and calling through all the images and um, it's like a giving your film a haircut until it finally looks right. So yeah. Now it's before great. we have to wrap up, I must ask about Orange's new black. Because <laughs> I'm a huge fan of our readers. Love Thank it. You. Is there Thank anything you. you could tease about where Tasty might be heading in the new season? Oh man. Uh I'm so ready for June 12th to hit Second Scout, everybody, <laughs> everything. Like, I am dying to, to tell people. But, um, Tasty is still on her path of maturity. And so, I feel like every season she's a little different, which is beautiful for an actor to get to play, you know, to, to your character to have more depth every time, you know, especially in such a big cast. Um, but she definitely takes on another role this season, which is <laughs> was a little I'm so nervous to do. I was nervous to do. That's but. a good tease, Danielle. Oh, okay, tease. Cool. I just can't is wait for you. Is long gone at this point, or is there any lingering effect to what she has done to you? She's definitely not long gone. I wouldn't say she's long gone at all. That's all I can say.